Hello boys and girls, this is Mrs. Jacobs and today I will be doing a review of the homework lesson 8.2 from Go Math. So please check your homework assignment and compare it to these answers to see how accurate you have been in doing your homework assignments. So let's take a look at the first two questions. The directions say list the next four multiples of the fraction. So we in number one are listing the multiples of three fifths. That means we need to skip count by three fifths at a time. So just remember that doing multiples is skip counting. So we are going to add three fifths every time we go to the next fraction in the list. And remember, if we're doing three fifths plus another three fifths, that's like adding, and the denominator doesn't change, it's actually just the numerator. So this would be 6 fifths, 9 fifths, 12 fifths, 15 fifths. In question two, we are skip counting by two sixths at a time. So two sixths and another two sixths is four sixths. Another two sixths is six sixths. Eight sixths. Ten sixths. Question three and four, the directions change. So it says write the product as the product of a whole number and a unit fraction. So there's actually two things we need to do here. So first we have to find the product, right? So we have to find the product of this and the product of this. And once we do that, we need to then write that product as a whole number and a unit fraction. So basically there's two things involved here. So two times four fifths is eight fifths. However, we now need to write that. That's the first step. Now we need to write that as a product of a whole number and a unit fraction. So then it becomes 8 times 1 fifth. Number 4. 5 times 2 thirds is 10 thirds. But as a product of a whole number and a unit fraction, we write it as 10 times 1 third. And five, Jessica is making two loaves of banana bread. She needs three-fourth cup of sugar for each loaf. Her measuring cup can only hold one-fourth cup of sugar. How many times will Jessica need to fill the measuring cup in order to get enough sugar for both loaves of bread? So, she is making two loaves, and each one needs three-fourths cups of sugar. So we need a total of six fourths. However, her measuring cup can only hold one fourth at a time. So we're asking how many times does she has to use and fill up that one fourth in order to get up to six fourths. So we could think of it in two different ways. We could say that six fourths written as a product of a whole number and a unit fraction is six and one fourth. So she would have to fill that one-fourth six times. It comes right from here. Or you could think it of as repeated addition. So one-fourth once, that's one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, right? Because that equals six-fourths. So whichever way, but the final answer to this question, okay, is Jessica will need to fill the measuring cup six times. That is the final answer, okay? So the final answer is six times. Question number six. A group of four students is performing an experiment with salt. Each student must add three-eighth teaspoons of salt to a solution. The 
the group only has a 1 8 teaspoon measuring spoon. How many times will the group need to fill the measuring spoon in order to perform the experiment? Well, here it says four students. And remember, in the text, it does say that each student, so each of the four, must add 3 eighths to the solution. So we need to do 4 times 3 eighths, which equals 12 eighths. Now, the problem is their measuring spoon is only 1 eighth at a time. So basically, we would need to do that 1 eighth 12 times. So answer is 12 times. Number seven. Explain how to write 3 times 3 eighths as the product of a whole number and a unit fraction. So first of all, we have to know that 3 times 3 times 3 eighths is equal to 9 eighths. So first, we find the product. Then we take 9 eighths and we have to write that as a product of a whole number and a unit fraction. So what we say is that to do that, we think of repeated addition. So basically, 9 eighths is 1 eighth being added 9 times. So we would say, 9 times 1 eighth. 1 eighth is being added 9 times. Eloise made a list of some multiples of 8 fifths. Write five fractions that could be in Eloise's list. So we are starting, eight fifths is already there, so we're going to continue that, right? So I'm just going to write eight fifths, but then I need um, one, two, three, four, five more fractions, right? So remember, when we are doing multiples of fractions, we are skip counting. Right, eight fifths at a time. So eight fifths and eight fifths, sixteen fifths. Another eight fifths, twenty-four fifths. Another eight fifths, thirty-two fifths. And it will be forty fifths and then forty-eight fifths. David is filling five three fourth quart bottles with his fourth string. His measuring cup only holds one fourth quart. How many times will David need to fill the measuring cup in order to fill the five bottles? So let's even put your quick set of the bottles, right? So there's five. Okay. And each one is three fourths. Three fourths. Three fourths. Fourths. Three fourths. So basically, I'm adding three fourths five times. Or I could do 5 times 3 fourths, which equals 15 fourths. So his measuring cup, David's measuring cup, only holds 1 fourth. So basically, we have to say, all right, 1 fourth once, 1 fourth twice. So how many times would he actually have to use that measuring spoon cup to get up to 15 fourths? So we think of it as 15 times 1 fourth. So basically... Answer is 15 times. Number three, Ira has 128 stamps in his stamp album. He has the same number of stamps on each of the eight pages. How many stamps are on each page? So since I know the total, he has 128 stamps, right? That's the total. We're trying to figure out how many stamps go on each page? However, there's eight pages. So we're dividing up the 128 stamps onto the eight pages. So this would be division. So our equation would be 128 divided by eight equals, and now we have to figure that out. So I'm gonna use long division.
10 to get 16. So final answer, how many stamps are on each page? It's 16 stamps. Let's not forget units. Many of you are writing answers without the units. So final answer is 16 stamps are on each page. Number four, Ryan is saving up for a bike that costs $198. So far, he has saved $15 per week for the last 12 weeks. How much more money does Ryan need in order to be able to buy the bike? So we know that he has to save $198. And I know that he hasn't because it says how much more money does he need. So obviously, whatever money he saves, it wasn't enough, right? So first, we have to start off by thinking about, step one, how much money did Ryan actually save so far? We do that by doing 15 times 12. So, so far he has saved $180, but now we need to know how much more. So we need to figure out the difference, right? From the money that he needs to save, right? To buy it, actually how much he saved so far. And we could see that he needs to save 18 more dollars. Number five, Tina buys three and seven, eight yards of Material at the fabric store. She uses it to make a skirt. Afterwards, she has one and three eight yards of fabric left over. How many yards of material did Tina use? So we already know that she has a total. That's her total that she um, bought, right? Now, after she bought it, she used some of it to make a skirt. So she started with three and seven eighths, right? But she used some of it, right? I'm going to put S for skirt, right? Um, that's the skirt. And then she was left over with one and three eighths, right? So basically, we need to find the value of S, right, for the skirt. Um, so we could do three and seven eighths, take away one and three eighths to get two and four eighths. So she used two and four eighths yards. Don't let, let's not forget the units or two and a half because that's what two and four eighths is equal to. So two and four eighths yards, that's how much she used. So the skirt was two and four eighths yards, okay? Number six, order these fractions from least to greatest. So looking at these fractions, I'm trying to think of a strategy I could use. And I noticed that all three fractions are greater than one half. So that strategy is not going to work for me. And then I noticed that they all have different denominators. So what strategy I would choose is to compare these with common denominators. So first, to do that, we need to list multiples of all the denominators. So multiples of 3, multiples of 12, multiples of 4. Then we find the least common multiple. This will be our new denominator. So what that means, obviously 7 12 gets to stay since that already has a denominator of 12. So that means we need to take 2 thirds and make what equivalent into 12ths. So that's times four. Whatever we do to the denominator, we must do to the numerator. So two thirds is equal to eight twelfths. And three fourths is equal to times three times nine twelfths. So now we can put them in order from least to greatest. Make sure that we're doing it in that order. Some of you, a misconception or common error is to do it the other way, greatest to least. So least is obviously 7 twelfths. Then would come 8 twelfths, but 8 twelfths is really 2 thirds, so we're going to use the original fractions. Then 9 twelfths, but that's 3 fourths. So these fractions are now in order from least to greatest. Thank you for joining me, and have a great day.